we thank God for those that have come for this overnight. And it is an overnight that is going to bring a lot of difference in our lives, one as if you were. Uh, this is the third month, end of third month, entering the fourth month. Number four usually is a unique number. I will not start telling you about number four. But most of all, we want to deal with some things in this overnight. Today we want to focus on foundation. Foundation. The word that I want to share is that your freedom is in your foundation. Your freedom is in your foundation. It is in your foundation that you are going to find freedom. Bonus if you will. I'd like us just to look at some of the words that are going to be said to us. But I want us to start with 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 13, that says, According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another built on it. But let, this is, uh, let each one take heed how he builds on it. I've laid the foundation. Let it, each one take heed on how he builds on it. Why are we talking about foundation? So this verse 11 says, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid which is Jesus Christ. No other foundation which anyone, mm, foundation can anyone lay that that which is, than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. It is on this rock that the, the Lord also confessed and said that on this rock I shall build my church and the, church and the gates of hell shall not prevail over it foundations, foundations, they, they matter a lot, and there is power in this foundation. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation, he continues with the story, in go, with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. It will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. I think it is good for us to be careful. But again, if you love building with gold, if you love building with the wood, if you love building with the hay, actually all these are materials that we can choose to build on. The foundation remains, but whatever we build on it will be checked by fire. And when the che it is checked by fire, it may burn, it may get destroyed, and everything. It will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work. So there is, in this building, there is this different types. Foundation of gold is the foundation. You build on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and straw. The choice is yours, but the foundation is Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A story is told in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 24. He says, therefore, whoever hears this saying of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended on the flood. And uh, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of so I saying of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, 
the floods came and the winds blew and they, they beat on that house and it fell and it was a great fall. I, I want us to look at a, a picture. Maybe we can, we, can, we can do some kind of drama picture. Drama number one is this. Somebody wants to build and there's so much in a hurry to build. They've come, they've dug a shallow hole and then they've laid their foundation, their building. And on this other side, there is this man who is actually known as a wise man. Because him, he did not finish digging. He kept on digging. When this other one was now laying stones and even putting a foundation, him, he is still digging. He still not has found, he has not found the rock. So he's digging and digging and digging, and the more he's digging, the other one is making fun of him. Kwani, you want to bury somebody? Eh? You want to bury somebody? What, where are you going? The question is, where are you going? So you need to build. The rain is coming, and him, he continues to dig. The other one is laughing. Because why is he laughing? He's laughing with, what do we call it? We call it uh, immediate gains. Something that you get quickly. Let's say it's like somebody who is going to a company, you want to get a job there, and you quickly bribe in order to get it. There's a sad story, I'll tell you that one later. But then this one is digging, and is digging, and he's still continuing digging. People are laughing at him and they're wondering, what is this man doing? Did he want to build or did he want to dig? But he digs and digs and he finds the rock. When he found the rock, he laid a foundation there. By the time he's even laying the foundation, who mwengine anafanya housewarming? Eh? Nyumba yake ime? Imeiva. His house is, is ripe. Everybody has come. The housewarming is good. The house is beautiful. And he, the house is very good. But this one is now laying the foundation. He has reached the rock. He's put his pillars and he's set his stones and everything is being done. The time he is on the floor, the floor level, this one, has finished two months in the house and is comfortable, but he's still building. It is taking long, but he knows what he's doing. Praise the Lord. You need to watch about those things that grow quickly because they fall quickly. Somebody said in the ministry, you don't just rush in. If you rush in, you rush out. Because lazima weave, you must ripen with struggles and with challenges. And so as he builds, he built a house also. It was beautiful also, just like the other one, but he built it later. It became ready later than the other one. But the other one was also ready and it was fine. But the fun that this man made of this man was so much. But a time came when both houses received the same type of storms. And this is what it says in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 5. He says, but everyone, okay, and he says, there was, and an verse 25, and the rain descended. The rain came, the floods came, the wind blew and beat on that house and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. The rain that came fell on this house. The wind came and there was a storm and it beat on the house, but it did not fall because it was founded on, on the rock. 
But everyone who hears this word saying and everything and does not do the things that will, will be like the one foolish man who built his house on the sand. Him, he built his house quickly. He celebrated his gains quickly. His things worked quickly. And you'd wonder, he was it Humpty Dumpty or Thomas Maconde? Was it Maconde, Maconde? What is the other name of Maconde? Simon Maconde. Maconde was born on a Monday. On Tuesday he was? <laughs> what happened on Tuesday? He was baptized on Tuesday. So he went to church. Then on Wednesday, he went to school. On Thursday, eh, he got married. Eh, you were born on Monday, and you're getting married on Thursday. And then on, on Friday, he became sick. On Saturday, he died. On Sunday, he was buried. He didn't reach another Monday. <laughs> so you, you, you can have a, Thomas, um, a Simon Maconde kind of foundation where vitu zako ni chap chap vitu zako ni pap everything you want comes quickly 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 but a time comes that when you are tested with the storms of life they will test your foundation they will test your stand they'll test you test your resilience your ability to withstand and stand and that is where your foundation will say whether it was right or it was wrong. My brothers and sisters, our foundations matter. You may take long to see your blessings come, but your foundations. You know, I had a lady give a story of a bamboo. A bamboo. Bamboos, when they are being, they, when they've been planted, they don't appear for quite some time. One year, two year, three year, four year, five years, bamboos don't appear. They only come on the fifth year, on the sixth year. And in six months, it has shot and it is up. My brothers and sisters, some of us, we need that deep foundation for you to grow taller. You know, I passed near Westland sometimes back, and I looked at a foundation that was being dug. It was almost 30 feet down inside the rock. And I was wondering, how are these people removing what they've dug? And I realized, the deeper the foundation, the higher the building. The longer it takes you to mature, the longer it takes you in the Lord, the pow more powerful, the more glorious, the more powerful it will become. Praise the Lord. It took long, it took long for us to grow from being what we in the ministry. It took long, long, very long, almost 20 years. Our work was to carry speakers, put them, set a stage, prepare the PA and everything, and another person will come and preach and preach and preach. Now I'm checking, when I grow up. <laughs> and it was tough. Sometimes you'd hear him preaching bad things, but you just say, okay, when I grow up. Yours is to set the stage, and not only set the stage, but to walk around the stage praying, 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 that the preacher, when he's preaching, the Lord's power will come down, and if there is any madman, because those are marketplaces in Kakamega where we were going to set up these things. So sometimes madmen come and pose as if they want to get saved but they just want to pick you from the platform up there and throw you down. So you have to pray and reject them before they come. Anyway, 
to cut the long story short, foundations are, are things that matter in life. And so because of this, I'd like to bring us to understand there are some foundations that you need to disconnect from in order for the Lord to give you his foundation. Praise the Lord. To disconnect from in order for the Lord to give you his foundation. And this brings us to the first scripture that we want to read in the book of Genesis chapter 12. In the book of Genesis chapter 12, Abraham is being called not Abraham, Abraham is being called from his father's house. Abraham is being called from his father's house. From verses one, now the Lord has said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that we, I will show you. Get out from your country, from your family, from your father's house. Can we read that again? Just let's read it. I think it is good for us to read it, for us to see it again. Because sometimes we are preachers, we see these things on the move. Now the Lord had said, can we read it together? Now the Lord has said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to the land I will show you. Now, just stop there. And look, you are being removed from your father's house, from your country, from your father's house, from your family. You are being removed from there. And God was doing something because Abraham had another brother known as Haran. I used to remember sometimes back what the name Haran was. But then Haran was the, the father of Lot. And God, actually Haran just died mysteriously. How old was Abraham when he's being called? Abraham when he was being called. Verse 2, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. He was 75 years old. I want to ask you a question. This man is supposed to be great. This man is supposed to be a blessing to other people. This man is supposed to be a very powerful person. But in his father's house, his destiny is down. Are we getting what I'm saying? His destiny is stuck. He is finished. He is there. He's still barren. In his father's house, barrenness. In his father's house, his destiny is finished. In his father's house, there is no vision or mission or anything. God wants him out. And God comes to him at the age of 75. How many people are 75 years old here? Come on, Muko, then you are younger than Abraham. <laughs> so if God is telling you to move from your father's house, there is something in your father's house that is hindering your destiny from being released. If God is telling you to come from your country, there is an altar in your country that is messing with your destiny. If God is telling you to move from your family, there is something. He's disconnecting you from some foundations that will not allow you to be the great person you are supposed to be to be the powerful person, the blessed person you're supposed to be. So Abraham is being called out at age 75. He, in his father's house, he's still barren. In his father's house, he has a wife, but there is nothing in their lives. And sometimes God calls us out of such so that he may change our names, so that he may make us a blessing to many others. Buana asifiwe. 
I hope you are getting what is happening. He changes your, your, your location. He changes your family. He changes your, your, your name so that he may bless you. Praise the Lord. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife. Look at the names that they had. Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all the possessions that they had gathered. All the possessions that they had gathered. In other words, they were not very rich in the land of Canaan. So he departed to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan, and Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Moreh, and the Canaanites were then in the land. I'd like just to say this. When you are going out, when you are leaving, <laughs> Be careful also what you carry. Buona sifiwe. From your father's house. Because that is what killed Rachel. We go back to Jacob. The grandson. The grandson of, of Abraham. They left their father's house. Actually, God told Jacob, leave from the house of Laban. And as they were leaving, Rachel, the spoiled daughter, the one that Jacob loved so much. Sometimes you can love a lady because she's beautiful. Lakini ukichwangumu. It's good for me to say like that because ladies are in this house. Yeah? With beauty comes kichwangumu, and with kichwangumu, you find that they are not tellable. You cannot tell them anything for them to do it quickly. So here is Rachel. She's loved, yes. But because she's loved and because of that, the Lord closed her womb so that Leah is the one who is giving birth. Some things come with foundation. And because Rachel did something, I think that is something that also messed with her. She stole her father's gods and carried them with them. You are being removed from a place so that you may go to be blessed, but you carry the gods of your father. And that becomes a mess. Because Jacob, without knowing, declared that whoever has carried those gods, may they be slain, may they die. And that was it. My brothers and sisters, remember, sometimes your foundation can be the one that is hindering your being a blessing. Your foundation can be the one that is hindering your greatness. It is hindering your being a blessing to many other people. The Lord needs you out. And when he needs you out, let yourself lose, just like Abraham. He walked out by faith, and he came to Canaan. He did not struggle. He did not struggle with anybody. He allowed himself to be led out, and he left his brothers. He left everybody else, and he came. One as if he will. I'd like to look as something else. There are some readings in the book of Acts, but I'd like us to look at the book of Genesis first. I want us to start with those Genesis readings then before, before we go to we go to, to, to we go to the right ones. Look at, let us look at Genesis chapter 47. Foundations. I'm talking about foundation. Genesis chapter 47 from verses 5 and 6. Then Pharaoh spoke to Joseph saying, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Have your father and your brothers dwell in the best land. And let, let, let's start from verse earlier. earlier. Can we start in verse 4? 
Mm, verse 4. Then they said to Pharaoh, let, let's go to verse 3, 4, and we go on. Verse 3, can we read it together? Then Pharaoh said to the brothers, what is your occupation? Your servants are shepherds, both we and also you are our fathers. But let's go to verse 2. I think verse 2 will give us the, the key to what I'm talking about. Can you look at that? What does it say? And he took five men from among his brothers and presented them to Pharaoh. Wait, five men, a very silent thing. He's taken five of his brothers, they've gone to Pharaoh. Verse three. And he said, then Pharaoh said to his brothers, what is your occupation? These are five people responding and they said to Pharaoh, your servants are shepherds. Both we and also our fathers. Yani, sisi ni wa Masai. Praise the Lord. And then we go on to verse three, uh, verse four. And they say to Pharaoh, we have come to dwell in the land because your servants have no pasture for their flocks. For the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. Now, therefore, please let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Goshen was the best. And may the Lord bring you to your Goshen. Buona sifiwe. This year. Buona sifiwe. We want to go to verse 5, the one that we are talking about. Then Pharaoh spoke. Listen to this and look at this very clearly. Then Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, Your father and your brothers have come to you. Verse 6. Verse 6. And the land of Egypt is before you. Have your father and brothers dwell in the best of the land. Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. And if you know any competent men, wait, wait, wait. If you know any competent men among them, then make them chiefs, herdsmen over my livestock. In other words, Mumekuja, take the best, get the best, but if you have people who are good at what they do, let them do what? Let them serve me. Let them serve me. An agreement is being made. And verse 7 says what? Do we have verse 7? says, then Joseph brought his father Jacob and set him before Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. In other words, the agreement has been made. How many brothers were there? Five. Five brothers. Five brothers. That is very good, and that is very nice. Buona sifiwe. But then a time came in Exodus chapter 1. It's good for us to just journey kidogo. Then we get what I'm talking about. Ex Exodus chapter 1 verse 6. And the Bible says, And Joseph died, all his brothers and all that generation did what? They died. But the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied, and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Exodus. But then I want you to look at verse 10. Verse 8 and 10, up to 10, it says, now there arose a new king of Egypt who did not know his Joseph. And he said to his people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more mightier than we. Come, let us deal surely with them, lest they multiply. And it happens in the event of war that they also joined an enemy 
and fight against us. So they got up, so go up out of the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh supply city, supply city, Pithons and Ramesses. Bwana asifiwe. Joseph and his brothers, the ones that went to make an agreement, have died. The children are remaining. What happens? Now they go into bondage. Bwana asifiwe. The foundation was the agreement. But now it has turned into a bondage. I look at that and I wonder, and I ask myself, I remember when my fathers, when my father and some of his friends and brothers, they moved to a certain area in Luoland, and they bought a big place, over 35 acres. They made an agreement. When my father died and my mother died, we became squatters. Hello? <laughs> when agreements are just made like that, and then challenges begin, you become outsiders and everything. Your foundation is where those agreements were made. Why am I telling you this? Because we are almost coming to a time of prayer. Why am I telling you this? I don't know what was made, where an agreement was made concerning you, concerning your family. Wherever that agreement was made, we need to go and deal with that. Because you must be released and loosed from that. Those foundations, if they were wrong, we need to disconnect from them and connect to Christ, the true foundation. The challenges we have in life is because of foundations. Out of that agreement, these people stayed was there famine all through for 400 years? Hello? They overstayed in a land that was not theirs. So, so, should I say this or not? Let me say. Sometimes we go into places and we are blessed in that place. But that place is not the final state that we should be and you make that place a home. But this place is not your final stage. And when you make it a home, you are actually setting your children up for bondage. Are we still together? Am I talking to anybody about here? There are places we've settled, but we know those places are not home. And you, you, are, you are enjoying, you are enjoying. Life is going on well, but then suddenly you realize that the place where you are, it is too late for you to move to the next level. They overstayed in the land that was not their land. Their land was Canaan, but they overstayed in a land that was not theirs, Palipakuko Peshwa, and because of that, they were now struggling with bondage. My brothers and sisters, your foundation, your foundation. If there is a foundation that is not right, if there is an agreement that is not right, if there is a place that you are feeling comfortable and it is not right, you need to start thinking. We need to break loose and move to our destiny. Praise the Lord you can do great, great things. And something that we spoke about in the evening, about molding, when you conform to the patterns, when you conform, there are some cultures that become patterns. There are some places where we stay that become patterns. 
Maybe you found a good house somewhere. And these are some of the challenges I would see with vicars those days when we were growing up, that somebody was a vicar, vicar in the church, and he did not have a house because parishes had houses. Now, kona sofa set up was ilo menunlua na kanisa. Fridge up was ilo menunlua na kanisa. And every, hey, suddenly, a young man who has not worked for long, he has several bedrooms. In fact, in one church, we had five bedrooms. And I was just deacon the other day. Five bedrooms. The only thing that woke us up is the fact that the elders of that church hated us and they didn't want us to inherit the, 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 the house with everything. So they removed every furniture they gave to their former vicar. So we had five bedrooms without beds <laughs> and sitting room without seats. It woke us up. We thank God for them. Praise the Lord. Because in that, it gave us the faith to pray. And in prayer, the Lord provided for furniture. He provided for the beds. He provided. <laughs> and when we filled the house, then we were in again in a problem. Because when the transfer came, we could not move to another five bedroom. Getting another five bedroom was hard. Praise the Lord. Conformity, when you are conforming to an environment, sometimes some environments become a place of bondage. And so there is need for us to break forth. Praise the Lord. So Abraham had to break loose. The children of Israel in their, in their, in their love for Goshen, in the beauty of Goshen, Goshen was a good place, but it was not their home. Praise the Lord. It was a good place, but it was not their home. Instead of living like foreigners in another land, they lived as if it was home. And they settled there, and bondage came and found them there. My brothers and sisters, are you settling in an enemy zone? Is there something in your foundation that is giving you the comfort making you get uh, a mind of going to sleep in the enemy territory and you think you are home, don't go to sleep. Praise the Lord. So the children of Israel, because of that agreement, they stayed in Goshen and they overstayed and there was a challenge with them. Praise the Lord. So as we look at this, let us remember this. Let us remember this. In Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 28 and 29, it says, And it shall come to pass that as I have watched over them to pluck up, to break down, to throw down, to destroy, to afflict, so I will watch over them to build up, to plant, says the Lord. In those days, they will say no more. They will say no more. The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. What the Lord is actually saying, the Lord is ready to pluck up, to destroy anything that is founded or any evil foundations that were laid so that we may not partake of debts we did not pay, so that we may not partake of bondages that we did not make agreement for, so that we, did not, we do not take anything that is extra. God wants to destroy evil foundations. Buana asifiwe. Buana asifiwe. There is no other foundation that will be laid except that one that Christ has laid in its place. Praise the Lord. So as we look at this, it's good for us to look at that and realize that when God wants to release us, 
He deals with the foundation. He deals with the foundation. Listen to this story as we go to almost concluding. We will start prayer in exactly at midnight. This girl in verse 17, see Acts chapter 16, verse 17, this girl followed Paul as and uh, Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the ways of salvation. That, uh, and this she, she did for many days. She did for many days. Praise the Lord. This is where sometimes there is confusion in the church because many Christians want to go na ukisha ombewa na uliza, eh, na umeona nini? Na huu mtu na kuambia, ni meona anko wako ila na faivi? You, you, you want to listen to that. Praise the Lord. This girl was a diviner. Diviners are like an x-ray machine. They will see every relative of yours. They will see who is up to what. But they will tell you all this, but they do not have the capacity to deal with whatever is planned against you. And those are some of the challenges. So when Paul realized this, the masters, when Paul saw this, Paul was greatly annoyed. The spirit of the Lord was vexed inside him and he turned and he commanded that spirit that was in that girl to depart and the spirit left. The owners who's, who were working with this girl felt offended and they took this girl, they took Paul and, and Silas, they took them to the prison. The Bible tells us that as they were bound into the inner chambers that they were bound there, they started praising God and praising God and praising God. And as they were praising God, something happened. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisons were lis prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations, praise the Lord, so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and every chain were loosed. May all the foundations that are holding you captive like Abraham, be shaken, and may your gates be opened, may your chains be opened, may your doors be opened in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And so as the doors opened, as they, with the shaking and immediately all the doors were opened, every chain was loosed and the keeper of the prison fled. Now, awaking from the sleep, seeing the prisoners were the doors were open, he supposing that the prisoners had fled, drew his sword, wanting to kill himself. But Paul, with a loud voice, said, "Do yourself no harm, for we are all here." Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas, and he brought them out and said, "Sir." What must I do to be saved? Praise the Lord. I want us to go to a time of praying against the foundations that are holding us. Why didn't God break the chains? Because the key to your chains are in your foundation. Praise the Lord. The key to the chains in your life are in your foundation. In that foundation, there are people who saw you before you were born. There are people who saw you when you were born. There are people who saw your mother walking around with a pregnancy, showing off. Ninataka kuzalia mtoto wenu. You know, mothers, mothers, sometimes this, this is a weakness. You're celebrating your shape and you're now walking like this. And some of those people you're showing yourself with are witches. So at the end of the day, they have spoken to that stomach of yours. By the time you are giving birth, your child has been, what do you say, raided. 
Some people don't even give birth. There's a lady that I told her, you can't greet your mother-in-law now that you are pregnant. Meet with her after. Because five pregnancies were taken by a greeting. Five. Just greeting and saying, oh, how are you? That is it. Three months later, the pregnancy is gone. Three months later, the pregnancy is gone. My brothers and sisters, your foundations must shake. Your foundations must shake. Any chain that is on you, you may think you are old, you may think it is over, you may think that my life is finished. There is nothing to add to my life that will make it more interesting than this. Let me kangumu and wait to die. Ukitaka kukangumu enda tukajikalishe. But these foundations must release everything that are holding you. Praise the Lord. Let us look at a good foundation. A good foundation. Do you know that Abraham tithed and when he tithed, he tithed to who? He tithed to Melchizedek. He tithed to Melchizedek. David also tithed. And as he was tithing, the person, actually whatever, this is what the Lord was showing, that even as he was tithing, his children were tithing through him. They were being blessed by him. The word is, if you are foolish enough to tithe, foolish enough, stupid enough to have an a living and to tithe, you are actually blessing your children incognito. The reason Solomon did not have to struggle to be blessed is because David had laid the foundation. And that is what is written in the book of Hebrews chapter 7. It was written in Hebrews chapter 7. Let me just finish with that, then we go into a time of prayer. Hebrews chapter 7. Let me look where the Hebrews chapter 7, from verse 7 says, Now beyond all contradiction, beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. The lesser is blessed by the better. Verse 8. Here, mortal men receive tithe, but there he receives them, of whom it is witness that he lives. In other words, God, as much as you put your tithe into the bowl, God receives it. Levi, even Levi, Levi was a great, great, great grandson to Abraham. But as Abraham was giving his tithe, the Bible is telling us in verse 9 that who received tithe, paid tithe through Abraham, so to speak, and for he was still in the leons, loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. In other words, there is a generational blessing that you release when you do that exchange. You're not doing it for man. It may look like it is man, but God sees it and lets it flow in your children. Every foundation has a repercussion in the future. Is it a good one or is it a bad one? Today, there in the, night, in, the night, in the in the morning, I saw somebody, a pastor, a friend of mine. He had taken a picture. He had put this picture of this man who stole uh, the sheep of our former president. Atikondoi me kalishwa kwa kiti yako driver. He me valishwa seat belt, and he's driving. And this man wrote and said. You think you have stolen. You think you succeeded to go home. You think you succeeded in everything. But a time is coming 
when you will reap. And you will be running to some pastors saying, oh, mimi hata siju ni nini na nifanya. Sema ukweli. <laughs> Sema ukweli. Uliiba. <laughs> somebody told me that somebody abused the former, the first lady, the first, first lady in the phone because he was told to kana uyu. At the end he was told, you know what, the person you've sold, you've abused, you've abused the first, first lady of this nation. And the guy started diarrhearing. He went to hospital and he did come out. Hosea 7 verse 8 says, they sowed the wind and they reaped a wild wind. Walipanda upepo na wakavuna tufani. My brothers and sisters, your foundation is a place for planting. You need to look. Are you the type that is planting on sand or are you the type that is planting on a stone, and that stone must be the foundation known as Jesus. On this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Which rock are you building on? I want us to stand up, time to pray. Let's take a moment just to worship the Lord because I want us just to start speaking. There are people who have been suffering, you are suffering, and that suffering is not, it's actually it's not a disease. There is an infirmity moving around and it is not yours. We will break that today. In the name of Jesus. Praise him. I hope you will be chap chap as you are worship, leading people into worship because you want to start praying, you want to minister to people. Even as we come to this point, I'd like to ask you, 
Is there a foundation that you are holding to? Is there a foundation that is holding you? That is holding you? And things were planted into your future without knowing. I don't know what was happening in the land of Haran. I don't know what was happening in the land of Haran that Abram was called from Haran. He was also called from his people and he was called from his family. And time has come that we must de disconnect in every way. But even before we start disconnecting in prayer, I want us to speak to the month of April. I want us to speak to the month of April. And when you are speaking, don't just speak, declare. Because the Lord has give you the, given you the mouth, you have the power to decree, you have the power to pull down, you have the power to pull down anything contrary in this month. The month of April for some people is a month when many people die. They die, why? Because of Easter, but because of Black Friday. But this we want to refuse. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we've lost enough people. We've lost enough people. Yesterday, I hear 14 students died in an accident. We want to refuse a spirit of death hovering in this nation. We want to refuse a spirit of death hovering in this nation. In the name of Jesus, can we say this? Can we say this together? My father, my father. As I come before you this night, I plead for your blood to disconnect me, to disconnect me from every evil foundation in my family. Disconnect me from every evil foundation in my family. Any place that I have overstayed, Oh Lord, uproot, dismantle any power holding me to that foundation. Today, as I stand at this midnight hour, as I stand at this midnight hour, I want to speak to the month of April. In the name of Jesus, you are the fourth month the day of judgment in the name of Jesus I pray that the voice of the Lord shall thunder through my voice as I claim my blessing as I claim my favor as I claim my healing as I claim my breakthrough in the name of Jesus oh April Listen to the word of God. My status must change. My star must shine. My glory must be restored. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Powers in April that wants to bury me. Powers in April that want to sacrifice my family members. I want to cancel your agenda. I cancel your agenda. I cancel your agenda. In the name of Jesus, I package every arrow of affliction you've sent towards me and I send it back to sender. In the name of Jesus, I package every spirit of depression you are sending towards me and I send it back to sender. Every evil agreement that was set against me, I break your power, I break your power, I break your foundation, I uproot you, I overthrow you, and I send you back to sender in the name of Jesus. Today, as I stand 
at the gate of April. The rest of the year, I'm receiving my breakthrough. Every spirit of delay in the month of April, in the month of May, in the month of June, in the month of July, in the month of August, or oh, September, October, November, December, every blessing due me must come forth quickly, quickly, in the name of Jesus. In this month of April, I will pursue, I will overtake, and I will recover everything that has been eluding me in the, in the beginning of this year. Oh, April, oh, April, may your womb be open and release my blessing. May your womb be open and release my blessing. I take by force, I take by fire, every blessing due me in April. I receive my breakthrough. I receive my power to do exploits in the name of Jesus. April, listen to the word of God. Every evil assignment against my life, against my family, hanging in the month of April, I cancel those assignments. I send you back to sender in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let it be recorded that my glory is being restored. That my glory is being restored. I'm receiving back my glory. I'm receiving back my destiny. In the name of Jesus. April, April, listen to the word of God. Listen to the word of God. As Abraham's name was changed, may my name be changed in this month. The month of poverty, the brand of poverty, the brand of deaths, the brand of deaths. I rebuke you, I reject you, I receive a new brand that I am rich, that I am alive, and I owe nobody. In the name of Jesus, oh April, oh April, every evil power that is monitoring my breakthrough, monitoring my ministry, monitoring my business, I pull you down now. I pull you down now. I'm putting you under my feet. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, monitoring spirits, I gorge out your name, your eyes. I gorge out your eyes in the name of Jesus. Evil branding, I dilute your power, I destroy your power, and every name given to me that is contrary will not hold me down will not hold me down, will not hold me down. In the name of Jesus, I want to decree and declare that my favor is in this month, April. My breakthrough is in this month, April. My employment is in this month, April. In this month, April, I shall experience favor. I shall experience breakthrough. I shall experience the mighty hand of uh, my God in my life. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Just take a moment. Just take a moment. Just take a moment. May the power of the Lord just come and stamp that. The Spirit of the Lord is telling me, just take a moment. Let the power of the Lord envelop you this night. Yes. Let him envelop you. There's power. There's the presence of the Lord is here. Even as he's ministering to you, 
changing your status, changing your status, every branding over your life, every power that wants to give you sickness, that wants to give you infirmity, that wants to give you things that are not yours. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I release you, I release you, I release you, I release you by fire, and I declare release over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. My Father, take over this sanctuary. Take over each and everyone who is watching. Take over in their lives. Move in their lives, Lord Jesus. Break, 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 break every power of darkness in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, as you change these people's status, let it be broken indeed. Let it be changed indeed. Let the powers of darkness be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Can you lift your hand up? Can you lift your hand up? My God and my Father, see these hands. And I want to decree and declare that the favor of the Lord shall rest upon these people as you are changing their status. Yes, there are things that are falling from you right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, things are falling from you. Any evil cover over you be broken. Every evil cover of affliction be broken. Every evil cover of the enemy be broken. Every evil cover of branding, evil branding be broken. In the name of Jesus, I lose you, release you, and destroy every altar of darkness that has been hovering over your life. Who Whoever is assigning demons to fight your life, whoever is assigning demons to torment you, whoever is assigning demons to cause delay in your life, whoever is assigning demons to scuttle your blessings in the name of Jesus, we want to remove them now by fire. They, we are demoting them by fire. We are destroying every altar they've raised wherever they've raised it by fire. We are losing you by fire. And Lord, my Father, I want to thank you because you're blessing these people. You're blessing these people. You're blessing these, your servants. In the mighty name of Jesus, release, 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 release. Delay is no more. Delay is no more. I break every chain of delay. I break every chain of rejection. I break every chain of stagnation. I break every chain of sickness. I command them out of your system in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, they're being removed. They're being removed. The angels of the Lord are disarming everything that is contrary against you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just as you're doing it, let the peace of the Lord reign in the lives of your children. Let the time of restoration come. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, I want to, want to declare right now, can you say my, my status is changing? My status is changing. My glory has returned. My glory has returned. My glory has returned. Demotion is over. The motion is over. Every power that stood before me against my promotion, I am pro. I, I, I uproot it. I cancel its agenda over my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, let your glory come down, Father. Move me from stories to manifestation, from stories to miracles in the name of Jesus. Manifest yourself in my life. You manifest yourself in my life. Give me a miracle that looks like a lie, yet it is true. Give me a miracle that looks like a lie, yet it is true. 
in the name of Jesus. Change my status. Change my status. In the name of Jesus. Stretch your hands before you. Stretch your hands before you. My Father, take over these hands. Whatever has been put in these hands that is contrary, that is causing loss, that is causing dryness, that is causing sickness, that is causing frustration at the point of breakthrough, remove, break those chains, break those chains, break those chains by fire in the name of Jesus. There are some rings that are being removed from our hands. There are some chains that are being removed from our hands in the name of Jesus. Father, break, break, break. Break everything. Lord Jesus, I release these hands now. And Father, I pray that you mark each and every hand. Mark each and every hand. Mark each and every hand with your anointing. And release your favor. Release your favor now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May these hands be hands of prosperity. May these hands be hands of healing. May these hands be hands of favor and blessings. May these hands be filled with increase and, and prosperity. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It is being done. It is being done. My God and my Father, I thank you. Thank you. Let's go back to the foundation. Can you say my foundation? Release me. My foundation. Release me. My foundation. Release me. Every agreement that was made. That was made before I was born. Today. I don't answer to you. Yes, my father's ate sour grape. But I shall not have a bitter tongue. In the name of Jesus, whatever I did not borrow, I will not owe. I refuse every evil flow from my foundation. I refuse every evil agreement from my foundation. If they agreed to be poor, poverty is not my portion. If they agree to die prematurely, I refuse. I will not die, but live to testify of God's goodness. If they agree to be slaves, I refuse to be a slave in the name of Jesus. Any evil foundation that was made in the name of Jesus, I disconnect, I disconnect from these foundations. I disconnect from this foundation. Oh Jesus, you are my rock. You are my foundation. Every evil material that my uncles, my parents, my relatives built with, those who built with grass, those who built with stones, Oh, Father, disconnect me from faulty foundations, from faulty foundations. By the blood of Jesus, I disconnect, I disconnect, I disconnect, I destroy every evil foundation, foundations of poverty, foundations of slavery, foundations of sickness, foundations of, of premature death, foundations of, of uh, calamity. In the name of Jesus, I disconnect from you. I disconnect from you by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. My God, my God, my God, my God, disconnect me, disconnect me. Any name I was called, even when I did not know, in the name of Jesus. Disconnect from those names. I disconnect from those names, in the name of Jesus. 
lose me from any spirit that connected with me through naming in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus lose me from any spirit that connected with me because of a name yes I denounce I reject I plead the fire of the Holy Spirit and I challenge this name by fire by fire by fire by fire you power that is taking my strength that is pulling away my my, my destiny because of names I cancel your agenda I cancel your power I cancel your power I disconnect from you in the name of Jesus every name from my foundation I disconnect by the blood of Jesus blood of Jesus saturate me and empty anything that is bringing patterns from my foundations my foundation be sanctified be sanctified my God my father release me yes just like that let's just hold your hands up as we pray for the Lord to release you their names that you are given some old women in the village used to call you my husband or my wife and you're wondering what is happening you didn't understand I was called the same but I want to break that foundation because those words were not just words you became somebody's husband you became somebody's wife and you did not agree to it but I want to disconnect you I want to break that hold I want to destroy every altar that was raised with the name that you are given and if any power that has been coming to rape you in the night or to sleep with you in the night evil ancestral demonic spouses we disconnect you now by fire and if you carried anything from your home that is not right from your clan that is not right any pattern that you carried we break it today by fire in the name of Jesus I declare release I declare deliverance on you in the name of Jesus and father may you lose these people may you lose these people disconnect this people any spirit possessing them because of evil torment molestation in the night I disconnect from that spirit in the name of Jesus I release your fire I release your blessing to restore your children restore your children yes some of these names have taken away your glory I command your glory to be restored now in the name of Jesus just like Moses when the glory of the Lord was shining in his face may your face resume its shine may your face receive its shine because the Lord's power is on you yes the spirit of being not visible is being broken is being broken is being broken right now you must be visible you must be followed by blessing you must be released from any foundation that is contrary in the name of Jesus thank you Lord I know some of us are suffering because of what people build in your family with but I want to pray that the Lord will cleanse you this night may the favor of the Lord may the peace of the Lord manifest right now in Jesus name we pray amen I want us to go into a time of worship, even or praises, even as we take a short break from prayer. God bless you. You see, you leave your one. 
Insini livio Buona Naja quaco Insini livio Insini livio Buona Insini livio Buona Insini livio Buona Naja quaco
You call my moving good and seeking I am be too. You call my moving good, I achieve boy my be You come to be good. I seek you. I Not a secure hat and a leo. You come to be good. I ask Tena tunaomba 
Oh